For lesson 12.6, we're talking about the volume of cylinders. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to find the volume of circular cylinders as well as find the volume of composite figures involving circular cylinders. The nice thing about cylinders is that it's the same formula that we were using for prisms, only the capital B in this case is going to change to be the area of a circle instead of a rectangle. So there's that capital BH formula. But in this case, since we're talking about cylinders, the base is a circle, and the area of a circle formula is pi r squared. And then we're still going to multiply it by the height of the cylinder. So I chose 18 and 19 on page 589 because it does um, lend, uh, those problems do lend themselves to you having to show some work. I know that a calculator is really handy, but in this case you have to keep track of some different things going on here. So please make sure to show all the work that I have on my screen on your paper notes. And if you need to pause the video and write things down, that's okay too. Also have your calculator handy just to double check your work and my work while you're doing it. So on number 18, I started by just separating this mailbox into two different uh, parts. The top is going to be half of a cylinder, which is why you see this divided by two in the second line of my formula, because it's not a full cylinder, it's half of one. And so when I plug in my numbers for my values, I have pi, there's my constant, 3.375 is the radius of this cylinder, half cylinder here. I knew that the whole way across was 6.75, so I had to divide that in half to get the radius, which is 3.375. It's pi times radius squared, and then I'm going to take it times the height, which is this length right here, 20.25. When you type all that in, I start by typing in 3.375, then I square it, then I take it times pi, then I take it times 20.25. It doesn't really matter how you type it in because it all is the commutative property there when you multiply, but I always start with squaring the number because that order of operations tells us to do that first. Um, don't forget that you're going to have to divide it in half because it's not a full cylinder up here, it's only half a cylinder. And you should get for the volume of that half cylinder as 362.3. Then I color-coded this rectangular prism on the bottom in this black color, volume equals capital BH, which again is length times width times height. The capital B for the rectangular prism turns into length times width. And then it's just a substitution game. 6.75 is the length, 6.375 is the width, and the height is 20.25 for a total of 871.4. So if you want the total volume, remembering that those values before were rounded to the nearest tenth, if you're checking on your calculator, I did round both of these answers to the nearest tenth. But when you add those two together, you should get the total mailbox is 1,233.7 cubic inches. Remember we're talking about volume, so our label will be in cubic units. So that's just basically saying if you had uh, a cube that was an inch by an inch by an inch, you could fit 1,233 of those blocks inside of this mailbox. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty decent sized mailbox. Okay, make sure you have both of those uh, formulas and calculations shown in the box on your note sheet for number 18. For number 19, I did a similar process where I color-coded uh, for the first one here. That's the outside circle, the outside of the tube. V equals capital BH, but the capital B translates into the area formula for whatever the base is. In this case, the base is a circle, so I use pi r squared. But I also multiply by the height of the cylinder, in this case, which is 28. So if I'm talking about the bigger circle right here, I know that the diameter is 13. From one side to the other, passing through the center is the diameter, but I only want to know half of that, the radius. So the half, half of 13 is where I got this 6.5. 
So pi times radius squared, 6.5 squared, times 28, which is the height. Just plugging in the numbers. When I calculated that, I got 3,716.5. I did round to the nearest tenth on that. Then I changed colors here, and I used the green to represent that tube in the middle that's hollowed out. So there's this guy right here. It's tiny, okay, and it tells me that the diameter of that one is 4.5. So volume equals pi r squared times the height. So I'm going to look at that circle first. The circle is pi times radius squared. If the diameter is 4.5, then the radius is half of that, which is 2.25. Okay, some students make a mistake and say, well, isn't 2.25 squared the same thing as 4.5? Well, we know that that's not true. 2.25 squared means 2.25 times 2.25. Then multiply it by your pi and your 28. Please make sure and pause the video and check that on your own calculator. To just get practice of typing that in and verifying your answer. The middle tube is 445.3. So if I want to find the roll, the roll's volume, I want to take the outside right here take away the inside. So when you subtract those two out, you should get 3,271.2, but this one's measured in cubic centimeters. And so if you t think about a, a centimeter, it's about the width of your pinky, and you have a block that's a centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter, it would take 3,271 of those little cubes to fill in that paper um, paper towel roll. Again, it's kind of hard to visualize, but I do want you to get in the habit of you know understanding what a cubic centimeter looks like and even a cubic inch. So there's two problems to get you started. Hopefully, um, just going through those gets you in the habit of showing your steps on each of the problems on your worksheet. Um, you can use a calculator as long as you're showing all of those steps.